today's video we're checking out a video that came through on my general video request form thank you so much to the person who sent this one through um i really don't know what i'm in for in this i did just see the title and i thought it would be interesting to check out this is desert storm f16 pilot fights for his life over baghdad this is an animated video so i think it is just telling the story of what happened in this situation um so yeah we're gonna check it out hopefully you guys learn something new watching this with me if you don't want to add anything more in the comments definitely feel free to do so i not only learn so much from these videos but a lot from you guys who leave comments down below so um yeah without any further ado we are going to get straight into the video Nervous. 72 F-16s take off from Qatar and the UAE and head towards the tankers waiting for them over northern Saudi Arabia. They're going to hit the Al Tuwaitha nuclear power plant and research facility in Baghdad mm. in what will be the largest single airstrike package of the war so far and the largest F-16 strike in history. Linking up with their escort of F-15 fighters, EF-111 electronic warfare aircraft and anti-radar F-4s the aircraft struggle to refuel from their tankers in the low visibility of dense cloud and strong wind. The facility is the centerpiece of Saddam Hussein's nuclear research program. In previous years, both Iran and Israel have launched strikes against it, but neither was able to deliver the knockout blow. In fact, they resulted in a massive increase in anti-aircraft defences in the surrounding area, SAMs, AA guns and smoke generators. It's the third day of the air war of Desert Storm, and so far war planners have only launched strikes against targets in Baghdad using stealthy F-117s or unmanned cruise missiles, fearing the ferocious defences around the city. Today is an experiment to see how potent these defences really are. Heading north to Baghdad after taking on fuel, the formation becomes stretched. The last four F-16s are ordered back to base because they're now so far behind. Iraq's radar network has not yet been taken out, and so military commanders know that the raid is coming. They order that the smokescreen systems at the nuclear facility are triggered. Package Q approaches the city. Two thirds of the formation bank away to hit the primary target at Al Tuwaitha. The others will continue north towards the downtown area to hit the Republican Guard headquarters, Iraqi Air Force headquarters, and an oil refinery. Arriving at the nuclear facility, the pilots discover a thick blanket of smoke over the target. The EF-111s desperately try to radar jam Iraqi SAM sites, but there are just too many. In three minutes, 27 surface-to-air missiles are launched against the raiders, and a wall of anti-aircraft cannon fire erupts around them. Most pilots can't see their aim points through the smoke, and so abort their attacks to limit civilian casualties. F-16 pilots who do press on to drop their bombs throw their aircraft around and drop flares to evade heat-seeker missile shots against them. All aircraft light their afterburners to get away as quickly as possible. No bomb hits are scored. While pilot skill played its part, it is a miracle that no aircraft are lost. Damn. The F-16s over downtown Baghdad aren't so lucky. Major Emmett Tullia, callsign Stroke 3, dips below the clouds to spot the oil refinery he is to attack. Suddenly, a cockpit warning alerts him that he's being fired on by a Vietnam-era SA-2 missile. Stroke 3, defending SA-2, he announces over the radio, and pulls into a series of high-G turns to evade. Noting that his chaff is not appearing to confuse the missile, he pulls a last-second hard break and the SA-2 flies safely past, detonating at a safe distance. Remaining calm, but now alone, oh Tullia God. continues his run on the oil refinery, oh hearing God. chatter from other pilots dodging further SAMs. His targeting computer automatically computes the correct release points of his bombs, and his two 2,000 pound bombs fall away. He turns south to get away from Baghdad. Holy moly. Three new warning tones shriek at Tullia, and he immediately hears a command over the radio, stroke three, break right, break right. He instinctively obeys just as three SA-3s flash by dangerously close on his left side and explode. Tullia's wingman, Major Jeff Tice, has just saved his life. 
<laughs> Other pilots radio frantic requests for his status, and after a few seconds he announces, Stroke 3 egressing southeast. Stress is audible in his voice now. He heads southeast for just a few seconds, when a warning sounds for an incoming Again. SA-6. Stroke 3 defending 6, he screams over his radio. He is now panting with the physical strain of the continuous high-G turns. Oh the SA-6 gosh. sticks to him through the turns, and Tullia believes he's about to be hit. Oh my god! He lets out a groan as the missile screams past him, so close that he hears the rocket motor. There's another one, stroke three defending again, he shouts. He's lost so much speed and altitude during the manoeuvres that his only chance is now to dive for escape speed. This takes him within range of the AA guns on the ground. Exhausted after six minutes of physical and mental oh stress, Tullia imagine? finally catches a break. The latest Sam loses lock on his aircraft and drifts away. No more warnings light up, and Major Tullia climbs and heads home. Major Tice, who had saved his life with the last second call to break right earlier, and another F-16, have not been so lucky. Tice has taken an SA-3 hit on his way out, and Captain Roberts' aircraft crashes on the way home with shrapnel damage. Both eject and become prisoners of war. Another aircraft nearly runs out of fuel from all the defensive manoeuvres. An unescorted KC-135 tanker crew dart north into Iraq to bring it home. When Tullia lands in Doha, his ground crew find absolutely no physical damage to his aircraft. Tullia is shocked to discover that his chaff and flare dispensers had malfunctioned, and that he has just evaded six surface-to-air missiles using manoeuvre alone. The raid is a failure. While the oil refinery is put out of action, no significant damage has been dealt to Saddam's nuclear facility. It's lucky that only two F-16s have been shot down. The experiment has failed, and from now on only F-117s and Tomahawks will go to Baghdad. getting attacked like that like he probably thought he was going to die at any moment imagine that mental strength that would take oh my god but at that point the adrenaline would be going right and it's like feeding into your brain and your brain is going to overdrive like doing whatever it can to survive at that point right but can you imagine that pressure I cannot believe this. And someone left a comment here. After six minutes of that, he must have slept for 24 hours straight. And then someone else said, I think he needed a beer. Damn straight. That is... Oh my gosh. Can you imagine being under that much pressure for six minutes? Six different missiles being locked onto your aircraft and you're literally just dodging them using your own controls fantastic communication though right because the other pilot right pretty sure it was the other pilot told him to break or do a hard left or a hard right i can't remember which one it was but that saved his life and like and him following orders as well at that point and that's where the training comes in right i feel like that last clip really showed how dire the situation was and how much fear and stress were in those voices right that really put you in the moment and f you could feel the desperation 
it was literally life and death scenario and, and I'm pretty sure he thought he was gonna die because the odds, you know, it's not looking good for him, right? He's the only aircraft out there. Um, missiles locked onto him. No countermeasures going on. He, it's just literally a, a lone aircraft. He's by himself, right? I, that's insane. That is truly, truly, truly insane. Amazing flying, right? Just the fact that he, his own controls, he could dodge missiles. That's insane. That's insane. And that really goes to show their training, right? Not only pilot training, but also keeping your core under pressure when it's life and death scenario. That's definitely something that you are trained to do, I feel like, in the military. Um, and I think that's something that the US does very, very well. Truly, truly incredible. Um, wow. But yeah, guys, let me know if you guys knew about this story or not. And if you do know about it and you want to add anything more, definitely feel free to down below. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really, really appreciate you being here watching this with me. Um, and if you haven't already, definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel and also check out the original video. I will link it down below. Go check out his channel. But yeah, apart from that, I hope you guys are having a great day fantastic week so far and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.